Okay, everybody, we're making one of, I'm Andrew Zimmern. Welcome to uh, YouTube 101. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite things to make for friends. It always amazes them. It's so easy. This is one of those dishes that we seek out in Chinese barbecue shops, in uh, Cantonese restaurants, that we can't, well, we think we can't do it at home, but you actually can do it at home very easily, and that is a crispy pork belly. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a skewer and either wrap it in rubber bands or just roll lots of tape around it at the same length so that I can feel the resistance of when I penetrate that six quarter of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, somewhere in there, eighth of an inch. Why? I want to crisp the skin, but I don't want to break too much into the fat, and I definitely don't want to go into the flesh. So all I do is just pierce this, I mean, a gazillion times. But because I have that little thing there, I can actually feel the resistance, and I don't need to poke very heavily. I don't need a lot of arm strength. So I'm just making as many holes as I can. Each one of those holes eventually will help perpetuate those tiny little blisters on top of the skin and fat that will create that crispy texture that we love pork belly for. Now, the butcher took some of the skin off, shame on him, but this is still gonna work beautifully. Make sure that you are not buying this without telling the person behind the counter. And look, we told the person behind the counter, leave the skin on, and they still took some of it off. Um, but these days in of pandemia, we order things and then have them delivered or picked up. So you just poke this as much as you can. You can't, you literally can't poke it enough. This is about the least amount of poking that I would do. I'd want to do about as third as much poking, but that will suffice. Then the tape comes off and you wash this. Okay, next thing that you wanna do, flip this over. Combine white pepper, five spice powder, salt, This is my seasoning mixture. This is a two pound pork belly. Notice it's just about perfect for that. Whoop. Take a towel. Put the towel there. Grab your sake. Just rub that all over there on your butcher meat. Get the, that nice and pasty and lay that down skin side onto a towel. And the reason we're gonna do this, we're gonna put this overnight in the refrigerator. You can do it for five, six hours. Overnight I find works best. It dries it out. Any liquid that's in the pork will come out through those holes, which is another thing we're looking for. Then it comes out of the fridge. It's a day later. Magic of television. I did not have, this was not a setup. I happen to have these tart pans. I think it's really easier to find a pan that's tight fitting for your pork belly so what I've done here is now that this is sat overnight in the fridge, I lay it down here. And I want to build up my sides about an inch over my pork belly. And you'll see why it's good to have Something like this that sort of holds its shape roughly because we're gonna take rock salt. And the reason we use rock salt, salt dries out the top. That's what we're looking for is dry out the top so that when we put the pork belly eventually into the broiler, it's gonna crisp and do its thing. 
But if too much salt, if we used like iodized pouring salt, like you put in a salt shaker, the whole thing would get so salty you couldn't eat it. This 100% of it comes off. I advocate for what, about a half pound, I think, in the recipe. Just a nice little stack like that dries it out and it protects the top from burning. It'll cook, but it protects the top from burning. Then this slides in to a 350 degree oven and we cook it for, you know, 70 some odd minutes, 80 some odd minutes. It's still gonna cook for another half an hour. Take two minutes. Ooh. Here's our pork belly. This is the one I just put in 80 minutes ago. Beautiful, right? So, what do we want to do here? We want to take the pork belly out. We want to get rid of all the salt. And you can literally just wipe the salt off. You can use the back of a knife. A lot of it will come off all on its own. And remember what we we're talking about before with those holes? It's rendered its fat, it's cooked through. Now we're just crisping the skin. It is completely okay. See these pieces that just lift off, right? Just put them in there, not a big deal. Grab the end of it, hold it up, and if any salt is clinging at all, just wipe it off. Now, I forgot one thing. Before I put the salt on, there, I rubbed it with a little bit of the white vinegar. Some people like to put a little bit more white vinegar on at this point. I don't. The white vinegar that we put on right before it went in the oven is sufficient to accomplish what I hope to accomplish, which is to crisp up the fat on that, almost like a chicharron. The skin on a pork belly is some of the best skin on the animal, and it will get crispy and crunchy and not too much to bite through. Um, they trimmed a lot of the skin off here. They left mostly skin over here on this end. You can kind of see it. So we'll probably get more of those crispy bubbles, but don't worry, because we're still gonna crisp up the fat on there with all those little holes. And I have another oven set to broil. It's okay if you have to recalibrate the same oven and go from bake to broil. Make sure that you are 10 inches away from the heating source. If you're too high, close, it's gonna burn. If you're too low, you're not gonna get the crispiness. So in this goes, nice and centered, and you can let that go for 25, 30 minutes. Now, everyone's broiler is different. Um, everyone's oven is different, but everyone's broiler is really different. Most ovens are an enclosed metal box with a heating element. So regardless of how sophisticated or fancy your oven is, in the dead middle of it, it's still got, with a piece of meat that's two pounds, about 30% humidity, and the temperature, yours may be run a little hot, run a little slow, but it's generally what it is on the dial. Broilers, some people have an electric oven with like a, the letter M or W in a coil, so it has hot and cold spots. Other people have more of a professional salamander where the whole thing is gas, my grandmother had one that was underneath her oven, like our plate warmer down there. I mean, broilers come in all shapes and sizes. So by all means, keep an eye on it. It's another reason to make sure that 10 minutes away from that broiler is a nice safe distance so you're not gonna make any mistakes. All of this fat and all of this salt can be thrown away. I made my Chinese mustard earlier this morning. Uh, you can use Coleman's, you can, which is an English brand. You can use SNB, which is a Chinese brand that I love. It's hot mustard. It's what I prefer to eat with the pork belly. Some people serve salt and limes and sriracha with it. Some people serve more of a nuoc cham, a Vietnamese dipping sauce. So people do all kinds of things. Um, some people put crushed bowls of crushed white pepper, bowls of vinegar, and bowls of mustard for people to dip their little squares in. It's whatever you like. But what's most important is cutting it. So make sure you have a nice serrated knife. 
because we all talk in a kitchen about, well, all I need to really cook is one good chef's knife, that's true, uh, but try cutting pork belly with it. Uh, a good serrated knife is perfect for bread, butternut or acorn squash, watermelon, anything with a tough rind and a soft middle, tough outside, soft middle, sounds like pork belly. So I'm gonna make sure that I use my nice serrated knife. We're gonna keep checking on that. It's gonna take 25, 30 minutes. We'll come back here just by the miracle of television. It's literally gonna be seconds. We're gonna be pulling that baby out when it's perfect. Again, 25, 30 minutes, check it after 20, and we'll see you in a second. All right, so let's check on that broiled This is the moment in the food demo where we decide whether to continue or not to continue. I've chosen to continue and stay vulnerable in front of you, my favorite people in the world. So sometimes even perfectionists lose track of time. I would not serve that in a restaurant. I wouldn't serve it to people I don't know. I would serve this to my family. It's really nice and crispy. And you can see that little bit of salt that stayed on there is absolutely beautiful. That's a really nice, but I mean, it is right at the edge. I mean, I don't, there's parts of it that are a little too black. I mean, brown is the color of flavor, right? So yummy, yummy, yummy. Yay for me, but And it's gonna taste absolutely delicious. Why? Because it's pork belly and it's crispy and it's just got a little bit of black on the top. But that is not the way I wanted it. So, how do you judge these things? Well, the best thing to do ultimately is gonna to be to taste it. There may be a couple pieces that are just too carbonized, um, but I mean, it smells good. I don't know if you have bacon uh, fanatics in your house where some people like it super blacky burnty, uh, and some people like it just flown through a warm oven and soft. Um, I'm kind of in between, but I do have family members that like it really crispy, crispier than I think bacon should ever be. Uh, so here we are. Um, I put it on this towel just to drain the fat. Um, now we'll put it there. The smell of the five spice powder. God, that's fantastic. Um, okay. So here's what has happened. Do you see that one blister right there? And you can see a couple little other places there where the skin was, because the butcher took off the skin. Uh, that'll happen. This is the saddest pork belly story I've ever told, but we soldier on. Oh, crunch, 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 even with a razor sharp serrated knife, you still get that crunch. I wanna show you how I would do this um, in my home. The nice thing is let the toothpicks tell you where to cut. Um, I will usually do this you know, when guests arrive and have it out and it cools. It's still warm when it goes to the table, but I'll do it as part of a larger sort of feast. And just cut midway between the toothpicks. And then, oh my gosh. I mean, look at that. I mean, that is delicious and crispy. And even though it's a complete, 
I was going to say a bad word on my part because I forgot about it. Um, it's going to be delicious and meaty, fatty. I usually allow three to four pieces per person, you know, like a, a little mini strip. Um, you can put a couple other pieces on there for folks with another two. Um, I always make a little bit more than I really need. Uh, the reason is that this will go into the fridge or leftovers. Well, uh, I mean, did it burn a little bit? Sure it did. Is it delicious? Hell yeah. Um, a little bit of leftover pork, even one strip like this leftover, three or four cubes, is enough to chop up and make fried, a fantastic fried rice, put it in a kanji, uh, do all kinds of wonderful things uh, with it. Um, Chinese mustard on the table, usually what I like to do um, is just put a schmear on the edge of the plate, like that, put it down and let people dip in if we're gonna have this with uh, appetizers. If I'm putting two or three pieces on someone's plate, I'll put a little schmear right next to what their, um, uh, to the side where their pork is being served. Um, but let's see, uh, let's see what we're working with here. Oh, and by the way, be very, very careful. I mean, obviously this is a leaner belly than most. You can see three or four layers of muscle and just one little piece of fat there in the middle. But the fat, the molten fat on a pork belly that just came out of hour and a half in the oven and 30 minutes underneath the broiler is really, really seriously hot. So don't burn yourself. Cause that little fat pot will just explode and you'll have insane pizza mouth. Mmm. I didn't know it hit a home run. I doubled off the wall in center and was thrown out trying to stretch it to a triple because I burnt the top. But that is crispy, yummy, delicious Chinese pork belly. Um, follow the recipe and don't make the same mistake I did, which was foolishly letting it sit under the broiler without checking it on time. I told you all I would check it after 20 minutes I just let it go to 25 and just ran on over there because I didn't know my own broiler. It's very, very sad. Until next time, I am Andrew Zimmern, and I promise you, I'm not going to burn the next dish.